In today's show, we're recapping Monday's NBA action, some big news injury-wise, and all of the action, all of the eight games, and Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble, on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball and on Substack at joshlloyd48.substack.com, which is free. Today's episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Locked On NBA. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. There's eight games on. I don't want to waste too much time. So, Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I went off with the timing on that one. Apologies to those of you watching here on video. Some news. Ja Morant, who was allegedly week to week, after one game, he's been upgraded to doubtful. So, sure, I don't know what the hell that means. It means he's probably going to miss on Tuesday, but it's good news. Now, still hold Tyus Jones until we actually see Ja Morant out there. But that's great news. If you're a Ja Morant manager, it's not probably going to be three weeks. I doubt they would um, Charlotte Hornetson and upgrade someone to Doubtful for four weeks like they did with Rogier and Martin. But you never know. That's why you want to hold on to Tyson until we find out about that. The depressed penis, Sadiq Bey, has been sent home from the Pistons road trip to rehab his ankle. So he is out for at least the next three games. They started Isaiah Livers. They played Kevin Knox. Yes, Kevin Knox, they played him 20 minutes last game. Livers should be able to get minutes over Knox. If he can't in this three-game road trip, then I'm pretty much going to be done with Livers. I'm just going to be like, I thought you were going to be good, but maybe you're not. He's not probably worth a stream. I think it's worth looking more at guys like Alec Burks, Killian Hayes, in the replacement of Cade Cunningham, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, but Bay being out, I don't think it really impacts Bagley or Duran much at all. Maybe the couple of minutes they play together, but honestly, not a huge amount. Joel Embiid, if you haven't seen it, he's out at least the next two games with his foot sprain. Hopefully, it's not too much more than that. I don't know what they're going to do. They could run Tucker. They could run Harold. They could run Reed as the center. If it's Tucker, that means George Niang and um, Daniel House get a boost in minutes. I think it's just going to be a little bit messy. Maybe it's Harold. Maybe you take a flyer there. But you know, I'm not convinced. He'd be the guy that I would try for Tuesday. But I'm, again, I, I, three games that Embiid missed the last three. 12, 14, 29 minutes for Harold. So, shit show? Yeah, it's going to be all up and down, mess. Once we hear what's happening with the starting lineup, that gives us a little bit more clarity as to what they're going to do. Jokic and Murray are doubtful for the Nuggets for tomorrow with COVID. We know that while Aaron Gordon is questionable. And I just want to give an update on Cade Cunningham because you heard me talking, well, maybe you did, maybe you didn't, talking about the uh, tweet that was posted of Cade, of a still photo of Cade Cunningham doing um, work before the game against the Kings on Sunday. In full practice gear, warming up, taking shots. Going, look, we're going, what's going on? Like, if the bloke's got stress fracture in his shin, why is he out there going through a warm up? And it made, me, made us go, all right, is the injury not a stress fracture? Is this reports of surgery? Because the report came Sunday morning, and then Sunday night, he was out there warming up. So I didn't know what it meant. There's a lot of people going, well, the Pistons are clearly lying. They're tanking. Mate, they were the worst team in the NBA before Cade went out. So I don't think that's the case. And I don't think you, you put a bloke under the knife or with the threat of going under the knife or sit him 60 games so you can continue to be the worst franchise because you already are. So I don't think that's the case. But it was curious. So I get got some more information on it. And I've seen a video of Cade working out prior to the game. Just a small clip. <clears throat> but he was moving around. He wasn't taking stationary shots. He was doing, not at full pace, by all means, but he was moving around, taking some shots. And here is my supposition as to what's going on with this scenario. I reached out to some other people that I knew as well, and they said everything they have heard, even after seeing this, was that he is, this likely scenario is still surgery for Kate. Do not drop 
Cade Cunningham. There is still a lot of unknowns here, but do not drop Cade Cunningham. My name is Richie Cunningham. But this is what I was told, that the likely scenario still is surgery, which will end his season, right? But that, that hasn't been decided. But this is what I think might have happened, right? He's got this shin soreness, he's with the, ch- the team, and then they decided, well, there's no improvement here. This is, say, Saturday or Sunday, and did some imaging, and it looked like there was a stress reaction in there. So that news report came out via Shams, that the, the, uh, Woj, I don't know who it was, <clears throat> one of them, with this um, yeah, stress reaction, stress fracture, potentially looking at surgery, which would likely end his season. So he's there, he's with the team, and yeah, if, the way to get that better is either surgery or rest, and if they're deciding on the surgery route, then him getting out there and working out before a game has no impact on recovery. It just doesn't. Like They would have said, look, you can, if you want to get out and have some shots, it's not going to change anything if you're going to undergo surgery. If it's just rest to see if it gets better, that seems pretty silly. But my, my guess is pure supposition, and you can disagree with this all you want, and it might be completely wrong, but I'm trying to put the pieces together here, is that he's, they've gone through this and gone, yeah, look, okay, it's, there's stress fractures here. Um, the best way to do this for your long-term future is surgery to fix it. It's going to end your season. And he's gone, all right, that's, that's shit house. but yeah, what am I going to do? Is it going to be, before the surgery, is it going to make it worse if I go out there and just you know 25% pace, have some shots? No. All right, because... I'm going to go out there because I, I, like, I love playing basketball. I want to get some shots up. And if I have surgery, I'm going to be off my feet for six weeks, two months, three months, four months, whatever it is. I won't be able to do load-bearing work for a bit of time. So while I'm here with the team on the road trip, I'm just going to do a little bit of stuff. It's not going to make it worse. And then we'll come home and make that decision um, to undergo the knife. That is, pu- that is, no one has told me any of that. What I have been told is the likely scenario was surgery. And I've seen the video of him warming up pre-game. So me trying to put that together, how does that make sense? That's the conclusion I came to. Use that info or supposition or logic or whatever, however you want. Disagree with them and go, Josh, you're wrong. Or, hmm, maybe I can see that. But that is what I know. And that is some of that is what I know because what I know is the likelihood is still leaning towards surgery. And he did do warm-ups before that game, not stationary warm-ups. He was moving around. That I know. The other stuff is me guessing, and I don't know where it, I don't know what it means or where it goes, but that is what I know, and that is what I guess, and that's how we put that all together. So I hope that that is somewhat helpful for you guys. What I do know is helpful is that today's episode is brought to you by Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the US, UK, Canada, and coming soon to Australia. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday. Find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget and just need to get from A to B. Test drive that new electric vehicle you've had your eye on to see how it fits in your everyday life. Many Turo hosts can even deliver that car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance, Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. Let's look at the waiver wire, the most added players in the last 24 hours for fantasy basketball. Number one is Caleb Martin. That is streamable stuff for today. We get it. I don't think he's a must-roster player moving forward, but with everyone out, no problem. Um, Lil John Concha. Okay! As long as Desmond Bain is out, and well, Jarman Rant's out as well. Conchar's a great option, especially for Tuesday where they're both not going to play. We love what Conchar is bringing. The Bronco, Jalen Williams. Broncos country, let's ride. We'll talk about him more later on, but I think he's a worthy hold. Shake Milton up 18%. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Up 18, yeah, up 18%, yeah, for Shake Milton. Um... Yeah, I think it, look, with Melton and Maxi out, sorry, with Harden and Maxi out, Melton and Milton are going to get it done, I think. Absolutely a worthy ad. Tory Craig up 16%. Yeah, he's doing stuff. He's putting up good performances at the moment, and that is useful. I don't know if it lasts, but for now, yeah, let's go. Alec Burks up 15%. Alec Burke. A really great streamer for tomorrow. We know there's no Cade, there's no Bay, so Burks is going to score for you. He'll hit some threes, he'll get some assists. Enough value in that. Ayo Dusumu up 14%. I look streaming for today, no worries. I don't believe he's a 12 team league guy, so move on if you want. And then Killian Hayes up 13%. I think he is a 12 team league guy. On to the most dropped players. 
Number one is Karis Levert, down 17%. Out today, minutes down, struggling. No worries, see you later. In a points league, I'd be probably less hesitant, less less likely to drop him, sorry, more hesitant to drop him. But in a category league, uh, no problem, see you later. Jeremy Sohan, down 17%. Zohan, now. Yep, drop him. Goldfinger Charlie Bassey, down 12%. Yep, drop him. Kevin Love, down 11%. He returned to action today. But he's only, in my mind, a back-end 12-team league guy. In a 10-team league, you can drop him. In a points league, I'm not sure you want to hold. In a 12-team category league, what's he doing that's that good that you need to hold through everything? Now, don't have to drop him, but I get the decision. Cam Reddish is out at the moment. He's down 10%. Probably shouldn't have been added in that many leagues, so see you later. Joshy Richardson and Kata Bates Diop, that was the five game week. They're droppable now, absolutely. And Seth Curry down our percent. Yeah, he should not be rostered in a 12 team league. Let's go to the first game the Atlanta Hawks and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Good win again for the Cavs. They get it 114 102 over the Hawks. Johnny Collins, 16 points with two steals and a block is good, but one rebound? Okay. He hit three threes. Yeah, not bad. He's. Playing okay. I think we sort of just have to understand this is who Johnny is. Clint Capella had four points, but 12 boards, two steals, two blocks. Pretty solid game for him. And his backup, Onyeka Okongwu, also did well. Now, I wouldn't look at this from Okongwu, and people will, don't worry. They'll look at this and go, well, that's great. 20 minutes, 18 and 10. I go, man, I love it. It's a double-double. That's, that's pretty cool, isn't it? And it is pretty cool. But no assists, no steals, no blocks. And he did it because he got to the line six times and went a perfect six of six and shot 67 from the field. And of course, he can be a high percentage guy, but he's also not a 27 usage player, which he was in this game. So while that is a good game, I, he's not a 12-team league guy. He's a 12-team guy to add if Capella gets hurt. With DeAndre Hunter out, they played a better player in AJ Griffin. He played 36 minutes and had 17 points with three threes and three steals on 64% shooting. Now I can sit here, you can sit here and tell me that he is a better option in that starting lineup than DeAndre Hunter. And if you say it, I'll agree with you. And if I say it, you may or may not agree with me. That doesn't matter. I think he's a good player. I think it's ridiculous he fell that far in the draft, and it's ridiculous that he was out of the rotation. But it honestly doesn't matter whether we say it or not, because Nate McMillan has to agree to it. And I don't think that Nate McMillan is going to bench DeAndre Hunter because he was sick for one game and Griffin was there. Now, I do believe Griffin's going to be a 20-minute-a-night rotation player ahead of both the holidays, who are both bad. But when Bogdanovich comes back, I don't think there's going to be enough there for Griffin. Like, stream him in if Hunter's out. We know the potential is here, but it's hard to see it realized. Trey had 25 with 10 assists. Rough from the line, but pretty good. Otherwise, he's starting to come back at the moment. Well, DeJounte Murray, just a bad night. 11 points on 24%. He had four rebounds and six assists. But as I've been saying with DeJounte, um, he's getting back into the level of production I thought he would have. He is a buy low a bit. He's 112th over the last week. So he's going to be better than that. But to me, he's not a first rounder. And he's barely a second rounder. And even though he is, what, he's 21st so far this season? I can see it falling. I think he might fall outside the top 25. And that is a little bit more in line with where we had him at the start of the year. For the Cavs, both Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland had nine assists. Mitchell had 29, four and nine with three steals. Huge game. While Garland had 26 with nine assists on 64%. Just gigantic games from both of those blokes. And Evan Mobley, low usage, but he had a steal a block with 10 points and nine rebounds. Not what we want, but he has been better of late and he's back inside the top 50 for the season. Also a solid Jarrett Allen game who's also back inside the top 50. The Cavs have got four top 50 players this season and for points leagues, it's four top 70 players. Jarrett had eight and 11 with two steals and a block. Lamar Stevens just out there filling in gaps, filling in holes, that's what she said, with eight points in 29 minutes with three rebounds and nothing else. I believe he's keeping that seat warm for Dean, Dean Wade when Wade returns from that knee infection, but I don't think either of them are going to be 12-team league guys. Well, Isaac Okoro had 3,000 the first three minutes. He played well yesterday, I think it was, but not someone that we need to care a huge amount for. But what about the Discman? C.D. Osman. 23 points in 29 minutes. He had a big game last time as well. He, he shot 80%. So we look at that immediately and go, no. He had no assists, no steals, no blocks. And then again, with Levert playing, Osman's just not going to have this opportunity. So I wouldn't look at this and think that we have to add Chetty Osman. I, I, I don't think that's going to be a useful move for most leagues. Second game. The Pacers, sorry. The 10-6 and six Indiana Pacers beat the Magic 123-102. The Magic were once again without Wendell Carter Jr., Paolo Banquero, Cole Anthony, Marco Fultz, Mo Wagner, and he who shall not be named. And then they lost in this game Trimmer Okeke, who had a 12 trillion. And obviously, Okeke is not a 12-team league player. Mo Bamba played 33 minutes. But let me tell you a little bit about this game from Mo Bamba. When 
15 and 4, two threes, 83%. You look at it and go, man, that's great. And it is. Bomber's a guy that was out of the rotation. And when Carter, Bunkero, Anthony, Fultz come back, he's not going to play. He also, in this game, there was garbage time for about the last five minutes. All the starters were gone, except Bumba. And he played garbage time with Caleb Houston, with Admiral Schofield. And to me, what that subtly says is, get your minutes now, because you're not getting them later on. So while this is good, while Carter and Bunkero are out, and even if one of them comes back, I think there is still a role for Bumba to be a 12-team league guy. If you can sell him for literally any 12-team league player... I would do it. I do not see it persisting for him. Franz Wagner had 20 points with six rebounds. And are we going to be, have to do this? I think we are. Nice, Gary. Gary Harris, 18 points with three threes. He was really good. And this is another name that's going to have an impact on a lot of these weird players on this team. Where he fits, I don't know, but he's there. Um, Bol Bol. He was just off in this game. 36 from the field, 50 from the line on one of two. Um, he had four turnovers. He had nine and nine with no blocks. Just honestly, just a bad game from Bolt. He was sort of out of control with the ball. As I've maintained and you know, me now, now I'm the Scotty Barnes and the Bolt Bowl hater, is that I worry about maintaining good usage and good minutes when those literal four rotation players return. But for now, we just keep rolling. Um... What else was I going to mention? Oh, yeah, Jalen Suggs, 12, 2, and 4 with four steals. He was bad from the field and from the line as well, as we're, we're well aware. But I, I still really like what he does fantasy-wise. He's top 100 on the season, top 70 over the last week. But he had to leave the game early. His ankle was... He was walking around like he couldn't even move. Oh, Jesus Christ, what's going on here? He went to the bench. He tightened up his ankle braces. The game was over. They never put him back in. So hopefully it's okay, but it looks like this ankle thing is going to bother him all season. The number one thing people are going to look at on the paces is go, oh, man. Do we add Timothy John McConnell? And I say no. 32 minutes, 19, 5, and 10 with three steals and three threes on 88% shooting. So number one red flag is 88% shooting. But that obviously doesn't impact steals and assists. That's the 32 minutes. So why did this happen? A couple of reasons. Duarte out, Nempard out. Only 27 minutes for Halliburton and a blowout. So he closed the game. He was part of that garbage time. He sort of line up and they just didn't need to push the other guys any more minutes. This is a guy that is not a top 200 player for the season. But he is with Nempard and Duarte on the side and getting a little bit of extra boost, but I would not get sucked in. There is not 27 minutes a night for TJ McConnell moving forward. There's definitely not 33 a night. As for Halliburton, back-to-back 14 assist games, 18-4 and 14 in 27 minutes. He's been unbelievable this season, and he continues that run. While Isaiah Jackson did some garbage time damage, 10-8 and 8 with a steal and a block, and Miles Turner had 10-5 and 5 with three blocks in 26. Jackson remains a stashable luxury player in case Turner gets traded. Should we stand by our man, Jalen Smith? Stand by your man! I tell you what annoys me about getting this wrong on Smith is that I knew he was bad. Like, I knew he was a bad player. But the fact that they signed him, you go, oh. The fact that Carlisle basically unprompted said, yep, he's our starting power forward in July. You go, huh. All right, they believe in him. And then you see what he did in Indiana last season on a supposed bad team, which is what we thought they were going to be. They're not. We thought they were going to be bad that we saw him go out there and score, hit threes, get rebounds, block shots, and have good percentage. That is a perfect fantasy game. Grab him. Round nine, round eight. The value's there. But I should have stuck with my instincts. He's bad. He's terrible. He's not a good player. He gets cooked when he's at center. The shot is not falling. He loses all confidence. He played 18 minutes. Six points, four rebounds. I had him on a lot of teams. I screwed it up, so now I'm going to jack him off. Get out of here, Smith. 22 minutes for Buddy Heald. He was just he just couldn't get in there to fall. Nine points on 23%. I don't think there's any need to panic there. But this was a great illustration of the Humpty Dumpty conundrum. Benedict Matherin, 22 points in 27 minutes. Man, that's sick, isn't it? But you know how it just, again, it wasn't a good fantasy night. Because he had one assist, zero steals, zero blocks. He was 46%. He was 8 of 10 from the line, which is great. And his scoring ability is great. He just doesn't impact the game anywhere else. And that overall reduces his fantasy value. In a 12-team points league, he's a clear must roster. In a 12-team category league, it's not as clear. I think you probably still want to hold, but he feels like he's treading water a little bit. I can't go through without um, praising O'Shea Brissett, who I also think is bad. 18 points with four threes and two steals. He played well here. 
He's pushing at least into 16-team league discussion. If he does start over Smith, you'd grab him in 14s and you might look at 12s. I don't think they're making that change any time soon, though. Today's episode is also brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. If you're the Pacers and you're looking to advertise for a starting uh, starting power forward, you probably don't use LinkedIn Jobs, but maybe you're in the Pacers front office and you're looking for a new general manager who doesn't sign a stinking power forward in the offseason after the Suns gave him away for nothing. Well, you can go in there and you can add your job, very easy to do, on LinkedIn Jobs. A couple of little things you've got to fill in and that's it. You post your job and then on your profile, you add the Purple hashtag hiring frame to let people know that you're hiring. The screening, screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. Question number one, is Jalen Smith good? Yes or no? And there you go. You've screened out applicants already. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's linkedin.com slash LockedOnNBA. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions. Oh yeah, they apply. Next game. The New York Thibodeaux beat the Thunder 129-119 with that final score. The burner, Jalen Brunson, 34 minutes, 34 points on, 93% two-point shooting. Uh Ah, what? Now, he offset that by going one of six from three, but 34, zero, and nine with a steal is excellent. He's top 40 this season. He's been unbelievably good. I was warming up to him more and more as the preseason went on and ended up having him like 54 or 53 or something like that, but he's outstripping my expectations. Someone talked to me on the pregame show about Rowan Barrett and said, you know, what do I do? Do I drop him? I go, well, look, if you drafted him, you're well aware that you're going to have bad percentages from him. But also, it's not going to remain this bad. It is going to improve from here. But the general skeleton of his fantasy productions there, scoring with average to below average rebounds and then not much else in big negatives. But you knew that when you drafted him, right? You knew that. But there was always going to, he wasn't going to be a 30% shooter. It would bump back up. And it did. 25 and 8, three threes on 63% and hit both his free throws. It's a bloody good game. It's a bloody good game. So that is why you you don't, like if you did draft him with those specific um, limitations in mind, well, yeah, he repaid you here. But, you know, surely it's like, I'll talk about this later on with the Timberwolves, but you knew what you were getting into when you got RJ Barrett. Emmanuel quickly. I can't figure this bloke out. 18 points, four threes, four assists. That's a great game. But, you know, next game you'll do nothing. And Randall had 25 and 11. And the center situation continues and continues to be annoying. Mitchie Robinson. And Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. Yeah, Obi even doesn't know what's going on with this center situation. Mitch Robinson started on a back-to-back. First game's back from his knee injury. That went well. He played 13, 13 minutes before leaving with knee soreness. Whether that's just a regular thing or an expectation thing. But at least he lived up to Tom Thibodeau's center requirements and had it at 6% usage. I would add Robinson if he's on any waiver wire. With the fact that he left early with a knee problem means that maybe you hold on Hartenstein, but honestly, I don't think so. Like, two and eight with a steal and a block on 16 minutes while the Lionheart Jericho Sims. You just made the list. He had six and seven in 15 minutes. I don't think they're ads. Remember I talked about Quentin Grimes having eight assists and that seemed really fluky? Well, he had eight and five in 33 minutes with one assist. He had two steals and it's with Reddish out. I don't think there's any necessity to grab him in 12 or probably even 14 team leagues. He does not have a good fantasy profile in this sort of fifth option role. He just doesn't. And he's not going to get there despite that one outlier big game. But the Thunder, if I'm going to say this guy's bad most of the time, I'll tell you when he plays well, Lou Dort. No, my son is also named Bort. This is a great game. 24 and 8, steal a block, three threes. That brings him to 157th on the season. For points leagues, he's 109th and he is a 12-team guy in points leagues. For category leagues, he's on the fringes. The minutes are relatively secure. I don't think they will be all season, personally. But they are relatively secure. And you have to understand what he brings. It's like Ron Barrett. He can score uh, um, daughter, but what else does he do? This was good, but he doesn't do that often. Shea had 30 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists, a steal on a block. An excellent game, but he did drop a little bit of efficiency here. And Joshy Giddy, 18, 9, and 7. That's sort of back on track for Giddy. Pokyshevsky was out, so they started Robinson Earl. He had eight points in 22 minutes. I had multiple people ask me if Robinson Earl was a must roster to play with Poku out. This should give you the answer. The answer is no, but this should also give you that answer. Eight points with two and two. And the Bronco, 13 points for Jalen Williams, four rebounds, zero assists and a steal. It's not fantastic, but the fact that he still played 26 minutes, coming off the bench, I think he's worth holding. 
we're getting there. We're getting... Cons- Look, if you don't want it, it's, I don't think you're losing tons if you drop him. That's no problem. But I think he's probably worth a hold at this stage. Um, they started Kenrich Williams in the first half. He had four points in 17 minutes, the Oklahoma City mud flap. In the second half, you'll never guess the bloke who started, Eugene Omari. Yeah. He played 27 minutes about five games ago and hasn't seen the court since. He had two points. So, yeah, I don't really know what's going on. This Wiggins, Kenrich, Lindy Waters, Mike Muscala, Isaiah Joe, Trey Mann, Darius Baisley, Omari situation is going to be frustrating every single game. As for Trey Mann, there are some people still holding him in 12-team leagues. I have no idea why. You shouldn't even hold him in 16 teamers. He is not a very good player, I don't think. And I know that he's not a good fantasy player. I know that. That is not speculation. He is definitely not good for fantasy leagues. Let's go to the next one. Honestly, I'm going to spend very little time on this. He says as he goes for 10 minutes. On the uh, Warriors and the Pelicans. The Pelicans win at 128-83. The second time this season that the Warriors have sat all their starters against the Pelicans. And it went about as you expected. John Kaminga played 40 minutes, had 18 points with a steal, two blocks, four triples and hit. 30% 30% of his shots, and he'll go back to doing nothing. Do not get sucked in and look at this line and go, Kaminga's figuring it out. He's just figuring it out. They're going to give you minutes. They're not. They're not. Don't, don't. He was a minus 38. Do not, do not do anything with this. Jordan Poole scored 26, and somehow Nick Young his way to zero rebounds and zero assists, but at least we got some scoring. And the rest of it, I tell you, what else is there to tell, tell you about this? Kevon Looney started, played five minutes, and was never seen from again. DiVincenzo went scoreless in 19 minutes. Anthony Lamb had two, six, and five and really isn't an NBA rotation player, but apparently he is. And he's getting minutes. Just a shit game that we don't need to pay attention to. The same goes for the Pelicans. It's a shit game in terms of fantasy analysis because it doesn't mean anything. It was just a 40-point blowout. Ingram had 34, six, and three. Devontae Graham played 22 minutes with Trey Murphy out. 19 points, six triples, four assists and a steal. Do not get sucked in. Jose Alvarado grabbed three steals. We know that's what he does. CJ had 15. Zion returned, had nine, two, and four. Larry Nance just played 18 minutes, but had two steals and two blocks. Herb Jones played just 20 minutes, but had one steal and three blocks. Like, I could make look at this and go, well, yeah, that's low minutes for Herb, not worth holding. But I could also look at Nance and go, that's low minutes for Nance and still produced. I guess it depends on which color your rose-colored glasses are or which, who's got the rose colors on the, whatever. You know what I mean. Which guy do you like more? That's what I'm trying to say. So basically, just don't do anything. With this game, like what, what can you do? Zion played 23 minutes. It was over basically straight away. It was in the first quarter. It was done, and we don't have any takeaways. And I got out of that pretty quickly. The Blazers and the Bucks. No Damian Lillard, so they go down 119-111. It was Anthony Simons. No, so of course it was Anthony Simons, but it was Shaden Sharp who started for Lillard, and predictably he didn't do anything. Now, he is better than this on most nights, two points on 11%, but he is not a good category league player. He is not an ad in 12 or 14 team leagues. He had two, four, and two with no defensive stats. He is the 269th ranked player this season, despite playing 20 minutes a game. He is not a 12 team. Do you want to repeat it again? He's not a 12 team league guy. I thought Justice Winslow would play more, 18 minutes for eight points. Probably fringy if you want to hold on. But Josh the Hitman Hart, 17 and nine, two steals. Great game. Simons, 29, 4, and 5 with three threes. That's a big sell high to me. Now, there is the risk of Lillard missing more time or getting hurt. But if I can get any top 40 player for Simons, I would absolutely gong him all the way out of here. Gong him, Red! Also, a good game for Yusuf Nurkic. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. First time that Nurk has played over 30 minutes since returning from his injury. 32 minutes, 16, and 10. While we talked about Jeremy Grant and the regression coming in, remember when he was the seventh-ranked player? Over the last week, well, in the week since then, he's uh, 133rd. 18-4 and four with two blocks on 38%. That was always going to drop off, and guess what? It dropped off. For the Bucks, Drew Holiday returned to the starting lineup, and they went with a relatively common group. It was Drew Holiday, Grayson Allen, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Brook Lopez, and Javon Carter. And I reckon we can go and drop Javon. I know Chris Middleton's not back yet, but we saw Javon early in the season when all those guys were healthy, not including Chris, but he wasn't useful. It took Drew Holiday being out for him to be useful. Five, three, and three for Javon with the triple one. You can move on. Yanni. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Sorry, the Greek man's told me it's Giannis. He played 35 minutes, 37, seven, and six with two steals. That's all well and good. But another just putrid free throw night. This is the biggest punt free throw we've seen since Andre Drummond and DeAndre Jordan. 42% on 12 attempts. He's just lost it. His mind is out of it. He can't get it back. And I don't think it's coming back this season. You're punting him. And you're punting him big. At least he hit 67% from the field. 
Punch Bob had 13, 5, and 4, solid enough. I think Middleton will impact him. Well, it was a big game from Grayson Allen. 17 and 8 with two triples. I don't care. I'm not adding him outside of deeper formats. Drew had 17, 4, and 6. While Brooke Lopez, the ridiculousness continues for Brooke. 14 and 4, one steal and five blocks. I don't know how he's doing it, but he is. And he's been great this season. 55th ranked player in points leagues and 25th in category leagues. This is probably the front runner for defensive player of the year with OG Ananobi just sniffing up behind. The next game is the Bulls. They're back, maybe. They won against the Celtics, 121-107. Let's talk about Boston. Jason Tatum, he's starting to regress a little bit. He's down now to eighth over the course of the season. 28-11-7 um, and seven with four threes. The blocks have regressed. The two-point percentages regressed, which we saw, um, were what some of the things really uh, holding him up. Big game from Brogo returning, 25 minutes off the bench, 23 points. It was 62% and six assists. I don't look at this and go, must have Malcolm Brogdon. He's a fringe 12-team league guy. But what I do know is that with Brogdon and Marcus Smart back, bye-bye, Maximum Derek. Maximum Derek. Always likely. He played 18 minutes and had 4-2-2. Two and two. Grant Williams continued to start 13-7 and seven with three threes. That's totally an okay line, but that's sort of where it sits. He's a back-end player. Well, Marcus Smart had 8-1-8. Eight, and eight. Not great. Two threes, a steal, and a block's not bad. He's playing a bit better than he was earlier in the season, but he did say that he's got a significant bone bruise in his ankle, and he might have to miss some more time with it moving forward. Just an absolute stinker from Al Horford. 35 minutes, zero points. He did have two steals and two blocks, but 0 of 9 shooting is bad. Don't panic. He's been much improved since that early season slump. He's 89th on the season, which I think is around that mark where we had him in the preseason. So he's sort of producing exactly what we expected. While Kyrie Jr. had 25-7 and seven with four triples, 38 minutes for old uh, Jalen Brown. JB, you've done it again. Rough from the field. From a fantasy perspective, 45% hurts you on 20 attempts and 60% from the line also hurts. He is, what, the 35th ranked player, but he's dropping. He's on a bit of a downward trajectory at the moment after a really hot start. For the Bulls, DeMar DeRozan was crazy. In fact, he hit three threes. That's how crazy he was. 28, 8, and 4 with three triples for DeRozan, while Zach Levine looked a little bit better, the skater boy. Just unfortunately bad from the percentages. 40% from the field and one of two from the line. But 22, 5, and 5 with five threes is good. It was also a solid enough game from the big guy in the middle. It's Bosa. It's big Bosa. Bosa zip. Bosa bitch. And by the by a solid game, 12, 13, and 6 is okay. But 9% usage, 86% shooting, this could have been a lot uglier. He's still solid enough, 41st ranked player, fourth, third round sort of a guy. That's about where he was going in that 40s type of area. That's fine. Good game from Patty Williams, 17 points in 26 minutes with three threes. He's a borderline 12 team league guy, but I do not believe that Io Desumu is. I talked about that at the start. He got 36 minutes with Goran Dragic getting hurt. 10-3-2 with nothing else and did it on 63% shooting. He is now down to the 130th ranked player for the season. I think you can do better in 12s. Dragic did hurt his shoulder. He was able to return, but he didn't play much. Only seven minutes for one steal while Kobe White got 14 minutes and Alex Caruso had four steals and he is a great, great steals streamer. Javante Green also fallen out of favor. The Minnesota Timberwolves beat the half heat 105-101 on the Miami side. There was no Butler, no Hero, no Vincent, no Oladipo, no Robinson. So they went with that same starting lineup from last time. Lowry, Struess, Martin, Jovic, and uh, Adebayo. Lowry played 44 minutes on a back-to-back. 21-5-9, and nine, three steals, two blocks, four triples. 31% is bad. 64 from the line is bad. But Lowry is now up to 57 on the season, providing some good value. Adebayo had 17, 14, and 5 with two blocks. You don't often get blocks from Bam, but rough from the field and from the line. While Haywood Highsmith also recovered from two horrendous shooting nights, 12 points with two threes. I don't think he's a rotation guy. Keep rolling Caleb Martin until these guys come back. Eight, six, and three with two steals and a block. Same with Max Struess, 19, six, and two with four threes in 40 minutes. Struess, for all of the um, us, the anal smoke blowing that goes on with Max Struess, he is the 125th ranked player this season. He's going to turn, I believe, into just a three-point streamer. Well, Jovic has been starting. I don't really see it for him personally. Four and five in 23 minutes with three assists. Obviously, he's young. He's got room to develop. I didn't love him in the pre-draft process, and he's been okay, but I'm not massively a fan. Let's talk about one of the biggest things that people are complaining about in the fantasy world, and that's Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Um, all right. 
You're going to see it everywhere and you're going to, people are going to complain in here. I bet in the live chat, people have already said this. How can you be seven foot two and not take a single shot? All right, people will say that. There's no, no, that, that'll happen, right? People will definitely say that. Um, okay, that's fine. But like prior to today, he was averaging about the same shot attempts as last season. It was a bad game and it is trending downwards and it's not great. He ended with four and nine with one steal and two blocks. But he hit all four of his free throws here. Um, 4% usage is horrendous. That, this, is all, this is all true. Like, that's a bad usage and he should be getting more touches. But as we talked about preseason in draft season a lot, if you draft Rudy Gobert in round two or round three, you're looking at a punt point scenario, aren't you? And you draft him to get rebounds, field goal percentage and blocks. And one of the biggest disappointments for Gobert this season has been the lack of blocks. But he bought two of them here. And you know how disappointing he's been? Man, I took him in the third round. He's been so bad. He's 42nd. This is not great. It's also a better game than D'Angelo Russell had. Look, nine rebounds, two blocks, four or four from the line. Like, it's not horrendous. We're overreacting too much because he's the easiest punching bag in the world and because the Timberwolves gave up so much to get him, which was a dumb move, yeah. And it's not working anywhere near what anyone thought. But it is far from a disaster. And I feel pretty confident in saying that zero field goal attempts will, will, will not be the norm as he moves forward. It just won't be. So get your jokes off, get your overreactions off, and realize that this is a mid-third round, a mid-fourth round player who's still got significant field goal percentage and blocks upside and can maybe get one or two extra shots. Is it a bailer? Yeah, I reckon it is. Carl Anthony Towns was great. 25, 8, and 9, a steal and a block. Big performance. And it was also great from Anthony Edwards. Goose, in fact. Um, 22, seven and four, four triples, four steals and a block. Now the opponents were the G League guys, a lot of them, and he was killing them. This is great. He also still missed his only free throw, but over the last week, Goose is the 10th ranked player. Absolutely stepping it up. He's almost back inside the top 50. So some of that early season stuff is done. D'Angelo Russell's bad. I'm going to make this proclamation now. This is a hot take. I don't know if it is. This is the last season that D'Angelo Russell is a starting caliber or starting NBA point guard. He is out of contract at the end of this season. He might get signed somewhere else, and he probably goes maybe as a starting point guard or a platoon sort of guy. But he, the days of him as a 30-minute-a-night starting point guard end this year. They just do. I think he's done. Could be wrong, but I think he's done. Jordan McLaughlin outplayed him here. 12 points, four threes, three assists, two steals. Keep an eye on McLaughlin if they ever decide to make a change with Russell. A lot of very smart basketball people are calling for this, for that fit of McLaughlin with those starters. I don't think it'll happen, but just watch it. McDaniels had 18 with three threes, four rebounds and three assists, no defensive stats. He either scores well or he gets a bunch of the defensive stats and can't put it all together. And that's so he's 96th in category leagues. So that's pretty strong. In points leagues, he's much worse, 144th. And I don't think that he's a must hold in points leagues. I didn't even talk about Russell's line. Three, three and five in 28 minutes. Another putrid performance. The artist formerly known as Torian Prince played 30 minutes. He had 7-4-2. and two. He got extra minutes because Kyle Anderson was out of this game. All right, let's do the last game. Hey, what's that was the wrong thing. Why did that come across as the wrong button? Oh, that's disappointing. Anyway, should I go fix it? Nah, don't worry about it. We're done now. That was annoying. Oh, I hate mistakes. Anyway, the Jazz, they lose to the Clippers. 121-114, the final score. Utah was without, of course, Mike Conley, and they did not start Talon Horton Tucker. They started Colin Sexton, and he did nothing. Let's accept the fact that he's not very good. 10-2-1, no threes, no steals, no blocks, 19 usage, 39% shooting, no free throws. He's better than this, but if Conley's injury is not long-term, which... We don't really know. They don't seem to think it is. And Conley was interviewed before the game. And he was seeming pretty upbeat about it. I would expect he misses this week, but we don't know. Yeah, Sexton can be a 12-team league guy, more of a points league player, but he's not very good. I think it's as simple as that. And the big numbers came on a terrible team where he was in charge of the offense and doing everything. And fitting in as a smaller cog, we know with these sort of guys who need the ball when they don't rebound, assist, or steal, or block or shoot big volumes of threes, they're not useful. And that's what we got here. Horton Tucker played 20 minutes. I would have hoped for more. 
He had 14 points and then an absolute mega Richie Benno. Two for two, two, two. Two threes, two rebounds, two assists, two steals, and two blocks. He's worth maybe a 14-team stream. Uh, Malik Beasley's the one that I want. He played 30 minutes, and it was a rough night, and it was always going to be up and down. He's a shooter. Six points in 18% is terrible. He had two threes, he had six rebounds, so he still helped a little bit, but the minutes is more encouraging there for Beasley over Horton Tucker and over Sexton on a night where Beasley didn't play well. Alinek had 19, 7, and 4, two steals and three threes. Great night there. While Markham, just tons of shots, 21 of them. He ended up 25 and 10 with three assists and a triple one. Continues his good form. I don't really believe that he's that much of a sell high. Vander Bilt Bar had 6, 10, and 5 in 24 minutes. No foul trouble, so that's sort of just what he was limited to. But it didn't mean that we got much Walker Kessler, who's rostered in a lot of leagues and doesn't need to be. 12 minutes for Kessler, 4 and 2. I don't think he's going to have much of an impact in fantasy leagues this season. It was a big game also from the man on the street, Jordan Clarkson. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. 26, 4 and 4, a steal, a block, 4 triples, 44% shooting. Pretty good game. He's been solid this season, just inside the top 100 in points leagues and category leagues. For the Clippers, there was no Paul George, whose knee injury diagnosis has turned into a hamstring tendon. That puts him in doubt, I reckon, for the rest of the week, but we, we don't know that. They started Terrence Mann in his place. He had six points in 21 minutes. We're obviously not rostering him. It wasn't a great night from Marcus Morris, and I do believe that Marcus Morris will become a drop later in the season. I will hold through this, though. Eight, two, and one is, is a terrible night. Um, Zubats had 14 and 14 with two blocks, and Storm and Norman Powell. Best game for the season, 30 points. Four rebounds. He took 15 shots, which is 30 usage, big, and hit 67%. A massive sell-high opportunity if someone wants to buy in. No Paul George, and he did the thing that we talk about. I need a, a better, a good word for it. It's like a triple whammy. He had the opportunity increased with more usage and more minutes because Paul George was out, and he took that opportunity and then went on a crazy shooting streak where he had 67%. Like, if he had a played 30 minutes or 28 minutes and taken 15 shots and hit six of them, then the game doesn't look that good. But he turned bigger usage, bigger minutes, and paired it with unsustainable shooting to make everything look fantastic. Wow, George is out. Look what Powell can do. Well, not so much. Right? So you turn that into a sell high. Johnny Wall. The numbers are solid. 13, 5, and 8. You look at that. That's great. He hit his only free throw. He was 50% from the field. He's still quite up and down. But the reason he only played 22 minutes is because he had eight turnovers. And Ty Lue just said, no, like you're making some ridiculous mistakes. Get off. He still is a fringe 12-team league player who helps you with assists and steals, some scoring, but it's very up and down. And like, how are you getting away with 35 usage? I don't know. Some of the usage is turnovers, remember? So that's boosted the usage number. Reggie Jackson played well, 27-3-4, like Norman Powell. He decided to shoot 50% in a game where he got more usage with Luke Kennard and Paul George out. He can stream him in in 12-team leagues, but I wouldn't be looking at him as a must roster. We're going to talk about the elephant in the room. Let's, uh, let's do it. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> it's it's weird. It's still weird. Kawhi's playing. Played 23 minutes, 8, 1, and 5. That's not a very good line at all. It, it just isn't. I don't. There's no argument about that. That's not very good. He shot 36%. He didn't get to the free throw line. Only 20 usage. We are a year and a half removed from ACL surgery. He should be starting to look better. Look at Jamal Murray. He's fine. It was rough for the first two day games or so, but he was fine. But, but, you have persisted through to the start of week six with Kawhi Leonard on your team. He's played three games since returning. Like, don't drop him. Yes, it's annoying. Yes, I don't know why it's taking so long. Yes, maybe he isn't a top 100 player by Christmas. That is distinctly possible. But I'd like to see more than three games. I'd like to see where the minutes go. But the way he looks on court is rusty as. He just doesn't look good. Is his career over as a high-end guy? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I'm not ruling it out, but I'm not willing to say that. I, If I've persisted this long, I will still hold. If someone is frustrated and wants to drop him, I'd add him. If someone is frustrating, frustrated and wants to trade him for Norman Powell, let's use an example, or Reggie Jackson, or Malik Beasley, guys from this game, Sure, I'll do it every time. Understanding I'll take some L's early on, and it might not work out for me. Maybe he is just cooked. That is actually on the table that he's cooked. But I'm not giving up on Kawhi Leonard three games back here. I'm, I'm, I'm just not. Do it if you want. Hey, and if you do want, that's fine. Drop it in the chat. Drop it in the comments below. 
Will, are you are you done with Kawhi? Are you giving up? I want to hear what people have to say about Kawhi Leonard at the moment. Let me know down in the comments below. And that'll do it for all the games. Let's look at the lines of the night. The monstrous goes to Brandon Ingram of the New Orleans Pelicans. The waiver wire line of the night is Timothy John McConnell. We spoke about that already. The young gun is Joshy Giddy, and the dud is Kevin Love. Your top 10 players today, Ingram, McConnell, Towns, Don Mitchell, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brunson, Norman Powell, Darius Garland, Lugens Dort, and Tyrese Halliburton. Top 10 players rostered in under 50% of leagues. McConnell, no, it's a weird game. Don't add in 12 or 14s. Devontae Graham, even weirder game. Don't add. Quickly, 14-team streamer. Grayson Allen, 14-team league guy. Reggie Jackson, like a good game, but a streamer for 12s while Paul George is out. AJ Griffin, just watch it. If Hunter's out, we add him. I don't think he's going to have enough value as we move forward, unfortunately. Horton Tucker's an interesting 12-team stream, but more 14 teams. O'Shea Brissett is a deeper league guy. Chetty Osmond's probably a 16-team league guy. And Alex Caruso is a steel specialist for standard leagues. Your top 10 players in points leagues. We're looking at Giannis at one, then Don Mitchell, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Lowry, Carl Anthony Towns, Shea Gildas Alexander, Bam Adebayo, Jalen Brunson, Jason Tatum, and Goose, Anthony Edwards. And that, We'll do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you are here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave those comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.